I think I'll wind up in chapter 6 of Acts. But if you want to beforehand, I want to to give you a little bit of uh, history here and a little bit of going on about what the church was doing. Jesus Christ, if you're looking with me, and I'll just hit whatever I want to, but uh, the, whatever the Holy Spirit gives me. Uh, chapter 1 of the book of Acts says uh, uh, that uh, uh, says in verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Look, now he was going back to heaven. He'd been to the cross, and he'd chosen some apostles, and he chose those, and he chose them for what reason? He chose them to get, to to start and to preach and to teach in the church, to build the church. Okay, that's what he chose them for. And all to whom also he showed himself alive. In other words, he showed himself, and I'm not reading all of it here. I'm going to hit the highlights of it. But Jesus Christ came back, showed himself to over 500 people, proved that he had defeated death, hell, and the grave. When they nailed him to that cross, they killed him on that cross. And all he died there, the blood was shed for our sins. That should be our message this morning at the church. Church and as a witness, that should be our message this morning. It shouldn't be about our programs. It shouldn't be about uh, all the other stuff. It should be that Jesus Christ died for their sin and Jesus Christ cares. And Jesus Christ, as I said in Sunday school, is the I am. I am everything you need this morning is what he is. Jesus Christ is everything you need. If I went around a building this morning and I asked everybody in here and I I said, uh, who's going through some stuff? What do you need? He can supply that need. And so he is the answer. But anyway, he showed himself to over 500 people and all of them back. And they assembled, being assembled together, they, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. But John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Now, yeah, you, here, you, here we go. I, I want to, again, I want to make this clear. He's talking about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. He's not being baptized. He's not talking about speaking in tongues. No, he's talking about the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Holy Ghost is going to empower you. The Holy Ghost is going to be with you 24-7. And the Holy Ghost is going to give you some holy boldness for you to stand up against some of the ones that uh, don't believe and some of the ones that are, are in power and all. And the verse number 8 says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. See, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you're going to be witnesses uh, upon, uh, unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. What it means is it's showing three cities here. He's talking about all over the whole world. He's talking about uh, that you're going to tell people that Jesus Christ is Savior of the world all over the world. And you're going to tell them and you're going to be out the Holy Ghost is going to make you bold enough to where that you instead of you standing there uh, twilling your thumbs that you're going to stand up and you're going to say Jesus Christ is Savior of the world. And you may hear me say that ten more times this morning, but that should be our message. That should be the church's message. You know, we, we, we stand around and we say, well, the, the church, the church, the church is just a building. The church is just brick and mortar. But it's the people that have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and it's those people right there that make up the church. And that is exactly what we should be doing is building his church church and we should be telling them how that they may accept him but Jesus Christ in, in chapter 2 and, and ver few verses first few verses of when the day of Pentecost come they were in one accord see now that, you know we, we look over that a lot of times and we read through this and we read whether how the Holy Spirit come in like a mighty rushing wind but here they come together and here they were sitting and here they were waiting they were waiting on something this morning 
if we could just all come into his house this morning and we could sit here in one accord. Did you get it, what it said? In one accord, instead of everybody be pulling every different direction, everybody be thinking about doing something a different way, but in one accord, when we, uh, when we come into his house, when the, when the uh, Holy Spirit came in, it came in like a mighty rushing wind, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they did begin to speak in other tongues. What he's talking about there, they began to speak in tongues, but they everybody understood exactly what the other person was saying. Do you understand me? I, I, some of you, ain't, some of you ain't with me, and some of you there don't uh, disagree with me. But it says there that at verse eight, and now, and how hear we every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born. In other words, all the different places they were from, they understood each other. Let me tell you something: when the power of the Holy Ghost comes into church, everybody understands what that's all about. Everybody knows what the power of God's all about. Everybody knows when the hair stands up on your arm. Everybody knows when Jesus Christ sends the Holy Spirit on the scene. Everybody understands then. I can tell you that. But anyway, uh, I got to hurry. It says, in, in, in looking in, in uh, chapter 2 and verse 41, what happened is uh, old Peter was, uh, he got uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. He was preaching. He was preaching bold. And he told him, he said, you uh, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and then it says in verse 41 then they that gladly received the word what what word this word right here it's still the same word today as it was then we still should be preaching out of this book right here the same book that they were using as scriptures that they were using then we ought to be using it today. People are trying to water it down and people are trying to say this is not in it or that's not in it. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood to cover my sins at Calvary so I've got to talk about blood in front of your children. There is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell. So I've got to tell your children that there is a place called hell. And so as I said before here this while back I lost one couple here. They run across the hill to a church because I said, uh, talked about hell in front of their children. Let me tell you, look it up. It's right here in the Word of God. And that's where you're going to go if you don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm sorry, but it's, uh, I'm sorry for having to tell it to you, but I'm not sorry for preaching the Word of God to you because the Word of God will set you free this morning. The Word of God will will take you from the gutter, guttermost to the uttermost. So here they, they tell them, he says, and they gladly received the word. They were baptized, and the same day were added unto them 3,000 people. Can you imagine what a revival broke out just then? Churches just began to start, and 3,000 people get saved on that day. Why? Because they were in one accord, number one. Number two, they were preaching the word of God and because that they were eager to help somebody and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And you know what, church? It ain't changed any. It's the same today as it was then. We need to be eager to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Verse 47 says in chapter 2, praising God and having favor with all people. Some of you, sometimes when we're praising God and some of them in the, whether it be songs or whether it be praising him in a preaching, the teaching or whatever the case might be. Some of you look like, oh, I don't know about this stuff. I don't know about that. Well, I got news for you. They were praising God. And I don't believe they were doing it quietly. I don't believe they were just running around going, praise the Lord. I don't believe that was what was happening. I believe they were saying, uh, uh, praise the Lord, shouting all over the place and all, no junk. They was filled with the Holy 
Holy Spirit, and they had to let it out there. And that's exactly what we need to do today. If the Lord has set you free, the Lord has done something for you, you need to praise him. Now, if he ain't done anything for you, sit there like a knot on the log. But if he's, uh, if he's done something, if he's delivered you, if he's set you free, if he's saved you, praise him this morning. When you hear the praise and worship, uh, 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 music and all, praise him this morning. Don't sit there. Let me tell you something. A lot of churches, ours, we have great music. We have great fellowship. We have a great church. I don't care what the devil says. We have a great church. But I'm here to tell you this morning, you can take a handful of naysayers and you can just absolutely stall out a good church because of a handful of naysayers or because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and he'll wiggle his way in some way or another. And you know what? Uh, of course, that, I'll, I'll preach about that in just a minute. But you know what? The naysayers and all. But anyway, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, I'm gonna, I've got a, a mention on that too. If I run out of time, I'll just run out of time. But I want you to understand something here. You've got preachers right now that all they do is they try their best to go get somebody else's members because they find out they give a lot of money or they find out that they attend or they'll teach or they'll preach and they go right straight after the other members of the church. That is not what the church was set up to be. The church was set up to be praising God, having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Church, we, our job is to get people saved. Now if you got somebody that's not in church, yes we take them in. Yes we won't them. But just to literally go because somebody gives a lot of money or somebody does a lot of singing or does a lot of things in the church to deliberately go after them seeking to try your best to pull them away. I've done already figured that out in my years of ministry. I've figured that out if somebody can pull them away from there, somebody can pull them away from here. Amen. If they're following somebody. But we're to, we're to tell people how to be saved. Building a church is one at a time. Just like, like I said there Wednesday or Friday night, there, one little girl, you say, well, preacher, she's not here this morning. No, but I bet you one thing, she'll be here on Wednesday night to use rock. She'll be right there in her class. She'll be right there in her seat. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know, and it's okay with me, but I would say that probably that I'll end up being uh, forced enough to baptize her. Amen. And so you know what? Tell them to get saved and tell them how to be saved and showing them the Word of God and showing them love and kindness and all. And that's exactly what it's all about, that they should be saved, saved, and all, and so, and, and there's more, more, and more. And before we ever get to the scripture, I've read scripture yet. But uh, look, look with me, look with me, right quick, if you would, in, in, uh, in chapter four, chapter four, and verse number four uh, says that uh, I got to find it first. Four. How about many of them which heard the word believed? See again, it goes back to hearing the word of God, and you know, a lot of preachers and I. I'll just add this in too while, I'm, while I've got you so uh, so excited about it. Uh, a lot of preachers and all, they won't read the Word of God. I've got two or three stories to read you this morning if I can get to them, but stories will not save you. The Word of God will save you. Stories and, and, and telling. And I listened to one preacher the other day and I thought, man, I'm just going to listen to this and see how far he goes with this. And you know what he done? He was talking all about what he had accomplished. All all about what he had done and all about the college he went to and all about his family. Well, that's all great and that's all good, but I'm here to tell you this morning, you start talking that stuff and you're not going to see anybody get saved or born again in the church. The Bible says it takes the Word of God Amen. that they be saved. You're sitting here this morning because somebody shared the Word of God with you. You're sitting here because somebody shared the word of God with you. But 4 4 says, How about many of them which heard the word believed? And the number of the men was about 5,000. Well, what are we talking about here? Here we go. I, I can count pretty good. There was 3,000 over here. 
Now we've got 5,000 over here, and, and uh, so uh, you can add up all these at these different places right here. The church has grown now from just a 120 meeting in one room over here in one accord. The church has grown to about 20,000 people right now. Are you following me? How did it do that? By the Word of God. By the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost working through the ones that wanted to, the ones that was willing to. I'm not going to say wanted to because sometimes I hadn't wanted to. Sometimes I hadn't wanted to share the Word of God with somebody. But you know what? The Holy Spirit would say, you need to do this. You need to tell them that. And you need to tell them the truth and tell them the Word of God. Nevertheless, moving right along. Now look. During this period of time, here if you'll count, if you'll count, I've 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 noted them, but I can't get them all to you. Let's say it's three thousand and five thousand, and and another five, and that's the women children. About at twenty thousand right now in here, but they didn't. They, they wasn't without problems. I want you to get that. They wasn't without problems. Everything wasn't hunky dory. Everything wasn't just pleasant and all. They was down there preaching, and you know what they did to them? They got down there and, and threatened to put them in jail, did put them in jail, threatened to beat them, did beat them, and all. But you know what they done? They kept preaching the Word of God. Church, quit letting the world and, and, and the woke society and all the things that the liberal uh, media and everything else intimidate you. Preach the Word of God. Witness the Word of God to people and tell them Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Quit letting, quit letting the, the world dictate as to what your message is. We even had, had a big revival break out in chapter 4. And when it did, they, they prayed. And he's talking about 31, verse 31. I'm just still taking the verses of leading up to where I'm going. It says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken. It's verse 31 of chapter 4. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Oh, my God, this morning I would love nothing more than everybody here this morning be right in the spirit of almighty God and when we come to pray did you see what it says and when they had prayed now it wasn't reading the word of God it's they prayed they prayed a prayer believing Jesus Christ was going to answer their prayer they come in and when they got through praying the place began to shake here and they was all filled with the Holy Ghost and that made them that much more bolder to speak the word of God church things haven't changed he says I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I change not. So listen, if you want to get in a good, you say, well, preacher, I'd like to get in a good old Holy Ghost revival meeting. I, I'd like to be in one. Well, get your heart right, get in the Word of God, and pray, and you'll get in one. Amen. Amen. I knew that'd go well. But get in one. But then you have people, you have people like in chapter 5 with Ananias and Sapphira. They, they, they thought, you know, well, hey, listen, uh, I got a little bit more for my property than what I thought. Because they were, what they were doing was, they didn't make them. They was, what they were doing was that they had had a, they had had a meeting and a great power of the apostle witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them and neither of them lacked because what they done, they sold their possessions and everybody had everything that they needed. Everything was provided. You say, preacher, are you telling me I've got to sell everything and I've got to get rid of everything I got and give it to the church? Yeah, yeah, you do that. All of you go sell your houses and, and your cars and everything. Bring your money in here and put it in, the, put it in the offering plate. That's what some preachers will tell you. That's what some will tell you. That's not what that message is about right there. If they gave. They gave to the ministry of the church. They gave. Now, if you feel led, as, as, uh, as uh, some of them did, if you feel led to do so, I told you before, and I'll tell you again, I've had two people be led to hand me a check for $25,000. And if you feel led, knock yourself out. We need it. We can use it.
But he don't ask you for that. He asks you to be bold, read the Word of God, pray, and worship in spirit and truth, and give to the ministry. And when, and when you say give, you, uh, you know, the, the, the rule is you, 10% is your tithes and anything over that's your offerings. That's up to you. You never hear me preach about that. And the reason you don't is I always say this part about that. I say if the Lord saved you, if he drug you out of a, uh, out of a hell hole and saved you, then you ought to think enough of him. And if you get in the word of God, you're going to read that where you should give back to him. It says give and it shall be given to shaking down, press down, shaking together, running over. So when you give, what is that money or time or whatever the case might be? You decipher that. Some people give 15 cents. Some people give $15. Some people give $1,500. But let me tell you, that's up between you and the Lord. And that's not what my message is about, but that's still what the Word of God says. See how quiet that got when I mentioned money? See how quiet that guy. If you're watching on Facebook today and you feel like writing me a check for $25,000, I will take it. I will personally come to your house and receive it and, and make it out to New Beverly Baptist Church just like everybody else has. Never asked them for a dime. But nevertheless, let's take a look at this real hurriedly. Now, I know time's come and gone, but I want you to look right here for real hurriedly with me in chapter 6 of the book of Acts. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, why did they multiply? Because they heard the word of God. What is a disciple? It's a learner. It's someone that has accepted Christ and wanting to learn and wanting to learn about his word. They multiplied, and there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected neglected in their daily ministration. Look, look, look. I'm gonna, I'll try to not get the whole thing out, but I want you to look at something. Church was rolling on. Church was really doing good. People being saved, uh, thousands now. And now what happens? Devil says, oh, no, just like he does in this church and every other church. He said, I'm going to wiggle in, and I'm going to try to cause a little bit of confusion. And that's exactly what he did to those. It says the number of disciples multiplied, but there arose a murmuring. If I could for just a second, if I can even find it, I don't even know where I'm at this morning, but uh, if I can find it, when believers are unhappy and begin to murmur, the first place to look for the problem is in their own hearts. Uh, I, I won't back up just a little bit um, if I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, here it is. It says those, uh, talking about those responsible for murder, they simply complain among themselves. When you complain to other people who are perhaps involved but are not in position to do anything about it, that's called murmuring. Murmuring, in other words, chatter. In other words, trying to, st uh, trying to stir up something or another here within the church. P most of the time, most of the time, that happens when somebody, gets their little feelings hurt and they try to play their little harp and they want everybody to hear it. I'm not appreciated like I ought to be. I didn't get recognized. I, I, I didn't, I, I'm not, I don't get to jump around here and I don't get to give my testimony every Sunday morning and tell everybody what I've done and all. That's exactly right. And they go to telling one, and then they tell the other, and then they, and most of the time when they go to telling the other, uh, they'll say, now be sure and don't tell anybody what I said. Don't tell anybody what I said and, and all. But, 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 but nevertheless, here's what, that's what happened. When it began to multiply and churches growing, murmuring broke out. Murmuring broke out among the Grecians and, and the Hebrews. And so, so, what did they do? They 
boys of the church, the apostles of the church, said, we got to do something. And I've got to add live now because I've run out of time. But they said, we got to do something or another. So they, they said, we got problems. So we need to handle problems with discernment. And that's exactly what we have to do today. Again, I've done told you they were in there, and what they had had was there was a, there was a uh, uh, when it says Grecians and Hebrews and that group were murmuring one to another and all because they didn't feel like they were getting taken care of like they should. Now, some murmuring is well-deserved. But some murmuring is just absolutely complaining. Some people are never happy, and they don't want anybody else to be happy. And so they will start stuff. And I'm telling you, I don't know how many churches has been destroyed that I know of by the spirit of murmuring. So I want you to know that the administration of the church what they did when this started happening was the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. What they're saying is, hey, listen, we need to continue preaching the word of God. We need to continue going out and telling people how to be saved. So we need to get some help, boys and girls. We need some help. And again, I told you I run out of time, so I got to add a little bit. So what they said was, he says, look ye out seven men, honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who you may appoint over this bi uh, business. Who's he talking about here? Who's he talking about? He's talking about calling seven deacons. Bear with me. Bear with me just a minute. <clears throat> he's talking about calling seven deacons is what he's talking about doing. And so what he says, he says, not don't just jerk up seven people out of the church and out of the congregation with any kind. He says, he says, get you some with honest report. In other words, somebody that's got a little character, somebody that's not a thief and a robber and a liar and a troublemaker. See, that, I, I knew that wouldn't do over too well. Of course, there's some churches that just ordain anybody. But I'm going to tell you, you need to be uh, you need to be saved, and you need to be of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, and point over that business. Okay, what he done was they pulled those up. Now I want you to understand something here. Those apostles did not indicate anywhere up there. Those disciples, apostles, they didn't. They didn't indicate anywhere that they were too good to do that business. They just needed help. I'm telling you this morning, I'm coming to you this morning and telling you that this administration needs some help. I'm telling you that this administration needs some help. You've got a, you've got a pastor, you've got an old pastor and a young pastor. But I can still take him off of that obstacle course over there. <laughs> but nevertheless, you've got an old pastor and a new pa and, and, and a young pastor. You've got six deacons. Look around you. We're going to be looking for one more, Jimmy, to, uh, of good report and good character that we can ordain. We need a seventh one. But then you've got, then you've got here in the church, you've got. Uh, let me find it right here. You, you've got 11 trustees, one head usher, one clerk, one secretary, one treasurer, one music director, six youth leaders, um, teachers. I don't know what we got in teachers. Some, some's in half the time, some's out half the time. So I don't know. We've got about eight teachers is what we got. We got four musicians. And, and I'm not talking about Daryl. He's on vacation today. But then we've got prayer warriors. we got van drivers. We need got two, need two more. That's just, and I probably left somebody up because I hurriedly wrote that down. Here's my point. Here's my point. They needed help in the church then. The church needs help today. 
The church needs help today. But I would say this, if everybody that I just called off right hurriedly and right quick would just simply do their job without whining and belly aching and show up and do it, I'm telling you, you'll see a difference in your congregation. You'll see a difference in your uh, people being saved, healed, delivered, and set free because they're going to get encouraged and they're going to invite somebody and try to get people into your church. And when you get people into your church that are lost, the main thing is to see that they get saved. But if you get people that are addicted or people that are going through some stuff and need to be delivered, Jesus Christ is the one that can deliver them. But you know what? It goes right back to the initial point. It goes back to the Word of God and prayer. It ain't nothing that the preachers can do, and it ain't nothing that the deacons can do, but it's through the power of the Holy Ghost working in your church, power of the Holy Ghost tugging them hearts and saying, hey, you need to be saved. You need to repent. You need to do this or do that. That's where it is. And when you are in the power of worship and praise and boldness, guess what? That Holy Spirit will be strong all over the house. Lost can't set in among us. Can't sit among us. I'll give you an example, and she's here this morning, and I'm not trying to embarrass her, but I'll give you an example. Uh, Junior Smith sat under the preaching, my preaching, for like five, let's say like seven years, but one Wednesday night, what happened? The Holy Spirit drew. He said, I got to get saved. Here's, here's my example, though. What well, if there'd been nobody here to, to tell him about Jesus, how he could uh, be saved? That's the problem we're having right now. Amen. People are not interested. People are not caring. And I, I really don't like using the word not caring, but they really are not interested or too busy. Let me put it that way. They're too busy. But, folks, we need to slow down, and we need to care about these folks that it needs to be, that need something from Jesus. If I could read to you, and I'm on close. Wherefore, brother, look ye out seven men, honest report, full of Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over the business. But we will give ourselves, we're going to give ourselves. Now, he's again talking about the disciples. We're going to give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Two things. Catch it. They're going to pray, and they're going to preach, teach the Word of God, and study. The Bible says, to study show thyself approved, rightly dividing the Word of God. If you don't know what you're talking about, you do need to keep your mouth shut because you'll confuse somebody. You will confuse somebody. If you don't know how to lead somebody to Christ, move aside and let somebody else do it. Yeah. But, but, and, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. And of course, they chose the seven. But I want you to check uh, uh, what I just read to you. And the saying that they were going to do that pleased the whole multitude. Church, Going back to the word I started with there in one accord. We need to be well pleased in one accord, praying, preaching, teaching God's word, and people handling the business of the church. And when I say the business of the church, you know, I'm not telling you that you've got to, 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 to work your bottom off, but I'm telling you that God has called you to do something. He has not called you to be the pastor or assistant pastor. If he has, let me see your hand. I'm going to give you my job. Brandon's going to keep his, but I'm going to give you my job if he's called you to be the pastor. But not everybody can be the pastor. See, some people get mad about that. They say, oh, the pastor, he's got it so easy. He just lays around, does nothing, and he don't do, he don't do nothing. He lays around. 
Well, that's partly true. I do lay around a lot, but I get a lot done even laying around. But you know what? We all have a job to do. It's kind of like over when it's talking about the vine and when it's talking about as I, as Sunday school this morning. We all have something to do to build the kingdom of God. If you've been saved. Now, whether you use that here or not, I don't. that's up to you. I would love to have you to because, again, we need your help. And you say, well, you don't have a position for me, preacher. Well, we'll make one. We'll make one. I'll make you a position. Whatever you want to be, I'll make you one. Amen. But not just to lay around and do nothing and tell other people what to do and murmur about what they do and, and fuss and complain about how they done it. We got enough of that. We need people that are, are concerned about seeing the lost saved. This church that I read about this morning, girls, you can come on. This church I read about this morning had the Word of God at heart. I want to close with this, and I left out two thirds. Man, I shouldn't even have wasted my ink printing that out. <laughs> Verse number seven of chapter six says this And the Word of God. The Word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now, let me explain that to you. The church grows some more through the Word of God. The number of disciples or people that got saved increased. But even the folks of the church, talking about the priest, they were obedient to the faith. This morning, if I can accomplish anything in this beat up message, I need some of you folks that has a position, some of you folks that want a position, some of you folks that has a desire to do something to make a difference in your church. I need you to be obedient to the faith. I need you to be obedient to the Word of God. Everybody has a job to do. But let me tell you, one person can't do everybody's job. What usually happens at that 90-10 rule of the church, 90% do nothing, 10% do it all. They get burnt out. I want you to go back, I want you to go back with me to just a minute. Chapter 4 and verse 31. When they were all right with God, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. stand here and proclaim to you this is the word of God as the little thing that John Osteen used to always open up with this is my Bible I am what it says I am I can do what it says I can do today I will be taught the word of God I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never, never, never be the same. If we could walk in here and say, I'm centered on God's Word and I believe God's Word by faith this morning, the devil would have to run and hide somewhere.
he would have to run and hide somewhere.